Dean Queen Ushlag Spolche. Hello and welcome. It's Misha Amy the Crafty Kyluk. And today we are going to be learning how to do Gustav. So if you have followed my content for any length of time, you may have heard me refer to dukas.ie, our digitized national folklore collection, which I use quite a lot in my own research for the channel and also for my academic research. If you're new to my channel, Falja, welcome. I will be going into how to use this resource and how to use this digital digitized archive in this video and then in future videos and potentially future live streams we can go into more detail on specific topics that you can find on Ducas. So first of all what is Ducas? So Ducas as a word in Irish is heritage. Even more than heritage it's a hereditary right or claim or birthright. That's the word in Irish, which seems a very appropriate thing to name the website that holds our national folklore collection. Folklore in Irish is Bailidus. Bail, which is mouth, and Idish is information or teaching. So Bailidus is our oral tradition. And in the late 1930s, between 1937 and 1939 to be exact, our oral tradition was written down. So in the late 1930s, there was a project undertaken by the National Folklore Commission to transcribe and document our oral tradition. This isn't the first time that oral stories from storytellers and just from the general public had been written down, but it's potentially the most true to form. Prior to the National Folklore Commission being set up, a lot of folklore collectors would have been coming from outside of the culture, would not have maybe spoken the language as in the Irish language, and would have brought with them a certain bias to how they collected or how they documented and how they really observed the culture. That's not to say that the collection is without bias. It's just to comment on the collectors that would have been around in the 19th century and the 18th century and before that would have been generally of a certain social class that maybe would have seen a lot of the rural customs as silly, superstitious, and in some cases, Savage. However, the National Folklore Commission was set up to actually record our folklore and to preserve it. The folklore collection itself is housed in UCD or University College Dublin, where there are 2 million manuscript pages, 500,000 index cards, 12,000 hours of oral recordings, 80,000 photographs, and 1,000 hours of video material. There are various different collections within the National Folklore Collection, including the manuscript collection, the schools collection, the photographic collection. Also we have audio and visual archives, as well as a folk music archive. What I'm going to be focusing on today is the schools collection archive and also the photographic collection archive. Both of these collections have been made accessible online through Dukas.ie, which is the digitized archive of the National Folklore Collection. It is free to use online. You can set up an account and you can also volunteer to help with the transcription. I'll talk a little bit more about the volunteer transcription later. But now what I'm going to do is actually switch over to a screen view and show you how to use Dukas.ie, how to search on it, what you can do, which ways you can search and what you can find on Dukas. So when you go to Dukas.ie, which is the website for the National Folklore Collection, you have the option to put it in Irish, in Gaelge, in Gaelge, or in English. So I'm going to leave it in English for the video just to show you how it works because predominantly my audience tends to be English speaking. So 
on the main website, you have the various collections. So you have the main manuscript collection, the schools collection, and the photographic collection. You can search by places. And when you click on places, it brings up a map with all the various schools and districts that have collections associated with them. You can also search by people. So when you select people, you can search by first name and surname. So if maybe you're looking for an ancestor or something, or you're doing some family genealogy research, you can also use that function. The themes, you can look by topics or folktale index. So if you go into topics, there is an entire list from activities such as trade or animal or economic activities, medical practice, medicine to games. You also have agents. So landlords, different groups of people that would have been around, also saints, events and feast days, different genres, objects, space, place, environments, processes and phenomena. So maybe different weather. So there's various different things you can dive into rabbit holes on there. You can also go to themes and go to the folktale index. On the folktale index, you have folk tales that would be quite popular and also organized by themes. So you have animal tales, wild animals, domestic animals, birds, tales about magic, supernatural tales, magical objects. There's also various resources so you can find out more information about the project information, resources, surname index, and also the weekly pick. The weekly pick is, it says on the tin, a pick from every week showing different accounts or different manuscripts or specific stories that would have been taken out generally based on the week that it is of the year. So you can see on March 14th, there was an account taken for Law Ayla Podrig, which is Patrick's Day. And back at the start of January, you have Ihe Nolik Bjog or Ihe Nolik Naman, Little Christmas, and so on and so forth. When you go into the collections themselves, the most frequent one that I use is the school's collection. And the school's collection was that big project that was done in the late 1930s where school children were asked to go out and collect stories from their locale, from their neighbors, their friends, their parents, their grandparents, and to write down all the stories and folklore that they could. When you go in initially, you can look by volume, number, and page. If you have a specific reference you want to look up, you can look up as well this in big list here of over 90 pages, which goes from volume one right up to the end volume. And will give you the location, the school, and the volume number. So if there's a specific something you want to look at, say for instance, you want to look at the Inishman transcript, you just click on it and you can open that up and see it from the very first page cover to cover. So this is the front cover of the copy book that would have been used to write down this particular volume. It gives you the school, the role number, the location, and the teacher as well. And you can literally go cover to cover and look through the copy book. And then on the right hand side, you have a text transcription that is available. You also have information about the collector. So the student who collected the information, their gender the address, and then you have information about the informant or the person who gave the information, their gender and their address, and also what language it was in. So this particular one is in Lunaga, is in Irish. Predominantly, the manuscripts are in English. You can also filter by county. So on the left-hand side here, you can look at counties. So say for instance, you're like me and you're from County Waterford and you want to have a look at the transcriptions from County Waterford. When you click there, it will filter down 
the manuscripts to just those available in County Waterford. Also, if you're looking for a specific topic, you can type in any topic. So there's a lot of topics that I've already looked up here. So say for instance, you want to look at the fair folk or fairies, you can type that into your text search and that will bring up various different results. You see here along the top, you have stories. So there's over 1000 stories, over 11,000 transcripts, and there's one photograph that you can look at as well. But if you're looking at the transcripts and you want to, again, filter down your search to a specific region or a specific county, you just use the filter at the left-hand side here and say, we want to just look at the stories about fairies in Cork. We can just do that and filter it down. Once you have one that you like the look of, you have your text transcript here, so you can have a look at it. You can see what language it's in as well. You just click on the title and it brings up the transcript. So you can see the actual page here, which will open in a new tab and you'll be able to zoom in and read the handwritten digitized copy of the manuscript itself, or you can read the transcribed digitized text here and you can click through the pages for more. As you can see with the first few pages of this one, there is no information on who gave the story or on the collector. So quite likely this was the teacher that was writing down stories that the children in the class had given them. All the transcriptions as well are done on a volunteer basis, which I'll talk about in a second. But when you go to the main skills collection here, you can see all, or you can see for transcription. And you can see in all that you have the first few volumes or the first page of volumes is 100% transcribed. What well, that means is the entire volume or the entire copy book that that volume refers to is 100% transcribed by the transcription of volunteers. You can click on for transcription if you'd like to see which ones need volunteer transcription to be done on them. So a lot of them are over 90% done. There's a couple here that are 65% done, 74%, 97%. So you can sign up to volunteer to transcribe for Dukas.ie as well by the METAL program. METAL is an Irish word, which means working party, a community gathering to get a specific job done. And the METAL with Dukas is community transcription. So this says we are inviting users of the site to transcribe on a voluntary basis the stories that were collected as part of the school's collection we hope that this work will increase community participation in the project and make the material more accessible. So we can see with the statistics here, there are over 95,000 pages that are in Irish and over 348,000 pages in English. The majority of each are transcribed with 99% of the English pages transcribed and 73% of the Irish pages transcribed. Given that there would be more English speakers than Irish speakers, this is probably why. So if you do feel like helping out, you can sign up and register with the METAL program and you can start transcribing some of the untranscribed digitized archives. And this will help with the future research and current research being done and people being able to access the information because the digitized archive manuscripts, while they're great for people doing research, they aren't searchable if they're not transcribed and they're also not accessible fully to people that may not have the ability to read the actual writing on them or to read the picture and they're not accessible for people who use screen readers or for screen reading software. 
So for that reason, if you can, it's really important to sign up to help with this. Another aspect of Duke that I really like is the photographic collection. And in the photographic collection, there are over 12,000 photos of various aspects of Irish life, Irish countryside, Irish culture, and Irish history. And again, you can search by county. And also there's some various countries as well. So there are various different things you can look at. So for example, when I was researching for the Irish handcrafting class that I gave at the Irish Pagan School, I used this to illustrate some of the points I was making and to kind of give a visual reference to the crafts that I was talking about. So if I search for spinning wheels, I will get transcripts that refer to spinning wheels and refer to the clothes that were made locally or different crafts or old crafts. But if I look at spinning itself and not have spinning wheels in it, I will get 14 photographs that show spinning wheels and show spinners on the spinning wheels. And not only do you get just pictures of spinning wheels, but you get pictures of people like this person here, Nora, who is in her home and has a pot over the fire and is just sitting and spinning her wool. And that is a snapshot of life in Ireland at the time. Usually there is an, a date reference on the pictures themselves. This one, in spe this one specifically doesn't have a date reference on the picture, but typically they will. So you can see here on the left hand side, the references are 1935, 1935. There's one here that's 1927. On the left hand page, there is a portrait of a man called Sean O'Connell, uh, smoking a pipe. And on the right hand page, there is a Tornin Lu, which is a flax spinning wheel. And this drawing on the spinning wheel is actually labeled as well as in, in Irish. You can find links as well to more information about Dukas.ie at the bottom of the main page. And also you can find their social media. I particularly love their Twitter. I'm following them on Twitter and they will promote different manuscripts that will relate to days of the week or specific festivals that are coming up that will have interesting stories or pictures from the photographic collection or just fun little tidbits of folklore and history in Ireland. So I would highly recommend checking them out and following them on Twitter and Facebook if you use those platforms. So I really hope you found that informative and helpful. Let me know in the comments if you did or if you'd like me to do more videos like this where I show online archives that are free to access and are a free source where I can show you exactly what the archives can do and also how best to use them. If you have any questions specifically on dukus.ie do drop them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them or to point you in the right direction. If you would like more videos like this or you would be interested in attending a live stream Dukas Dive, let me know in the comments and I will endeavour to organise that. I'll also be doing a Q&A at some point, so if you have any questions on doing this type of research in using digital archives or physical archives, let me know and I will include that in the Q&A. Or if there's a lot of questions on this type of research, I can also do a separate Q&A on doing archival research because it is something that we have been doing quite a lot this last semester in my MA program. And I would just be happy to talk about it and give some pointers on how to access these resources, how to go about looking at them and the types of issues you can come into as well. So Shine for me for the moment, Gervin Mila Malkathas Chopped, thank you very much for coming and happy Dukas diving. Long ago, I will see you in the next video.